Now is our time for meditation. So I invite you to get things out of your lap. Close your eyes, if you're comfortable doing so. And we're going to take a deep breath in. And when we take that deep breath in, we're going to feel that golden light of understanding filling us. Beginning from behind your forehead, all the way to your crown chakra, breathing in again, sending it all the way down through your body, that golden light of understanding. That light that dissolves all misunderstandings that may have happened in your life. That golden light is emanating from every cell, atom, tissue, and organ, and system within your body, healing and renewing and restoring your physicality, your emotions, healing those memories of times when you did not understand what was happening in your life. And so I invite you now to let that golden light of understanding fill your heart, and fill your mind as you revisit in this time of quiet those areas that still need love and healing by this golden light of understanding in the silence. Once we understand in the depth of our being that that Christ lives within us, as us, and through us, that peace of God, the joy of God, the love of God lives in us Always, there's no separation between us and the love of God ever. And so when we know this, we can see things rightly. We can see anything that we felt like was a misunderstanding now healed with the light of love. And we can know in our heart of hearts that in every moment of every day, we are in the right place at the right time, doing exactly what we're supposed to do, having those spiritual tools to do what it is that we need to do. So breathe in and trust. Trust that you always have exactly what you need when you need it. And in this moment, we are healed and whole and perfect in every way. We claim that now. We claim our spiritual identity. And we say thank you, indwelling spirit, that this is so that we choose it. 
And now we begin to bring our awareness back into the room. <coughs> Wiggling our toes and fingers and whenever you're ready, just open your beautiful eyes. Know beyond your physical eyes. This is our last week of our study of understanding, of spiritual understanding. We've been talking about this power the entire month of July. And I want to share with you, some of you know this story, but when I, like right after I first came to this church, it's been a number of years now, I had a, an episode where... Um, Someone told me that there was a lady that was leaving in a huff. Something had transpired that she was very upset about. And so I went out to the parking lot to see what was going on. And it turns out that she was very upset with me, that I had said or I had done something. And she was furious. And she lit into me out in the parking lot. And I, I have never had anybody talk to me like that before. And so I was sort of taken aback because I was caught off guard. And you know, I was like, what? What did, what did I do exactly? I didn't really understand. And I, you know, I started to shake. You know, f my physicality was feeling the anger that was coming out of this woman. And so I, I began to pray. I took a deep breath and I, I prayed for spirit to give me the words to say to make this woman feel better. And in that instant, this peace of God came over me like I could not even imagine. This peace that was so beautiful, this love filled my heart, and I just sent it out right there in that moment to her. While I'm listening to the ranting and raving, I'm sending love, you know, and I want to know you. I apologized. I listened a little bit longer. And that love dissipated that emotion. And at the end of the conversation, she apologized to me. And then she came back in, and we all attended church that Sunday. Wow. The power that you have within you to dissipate misunderstandings is phenomenal. It's just phenomenal when you know, know it, because true spiritual understanding, it can come in a flash, in a moment, just like what happened to me, or it can come in sort of like an intuition. But what it offers to you is true peace. True peace to our soul, that we can see beyond behaviors that are right in front of us, and know that's not the truth of that person. That's not the truth of them. So, Unity has created um, a video for us to talk about this wonderful gift that we have of spiritual understanding. I call upon my gift of divine understanding for insights into my daily journey. Spiritual understanding guides my mind and heart when I am not sure of the path to take, the decision to make, or the words to say. Understanding takes me to deeper levels of compassion and connection to others. My inner power of understanding sees beyond human appearances and into the light of truth. I am grateful for the gifts, the joys, and the presence of the divine in every event or circumstance. With spiritual understanding, I know everything is unfolding for my highest good. I love that spiritual understanding gives me insights and deeper levels of compassion. That's when you're seeing things with your spiritual eyes. So let's say our affirmation together for this month. With spiritual understanding, I know that everything is unfolding for my highest good. 
And what a gift that is to have that inner knowing that everything is supposed to be the way it is because good has to come from all of it. I credit my spiritual understanding with being able to see that woman who was so distressed, to see that beyond that ranting and raving, there was a hurt child in there. Someone had upset this lady that was before I even came into the picture, someone had hurt her at some sort of level and she was letting off steam and I just happened to be there. That's what spiritual understanding can do for you is it can help you be more objective about what you're seeing going on in your life and don't we need those spiritual tools when we're going through our daily lives. We especially need it in the car so that road rage doesn't get a hold of us. We, we can see that person cutting us off and saying, I know you're just like in a hurry because your child has to go to the doctor or something. We can do that to ourselves. We can help ourselves see the truth through that behavior. Charles Fillmore said, there are only two ways of getting understanding. One is following the guidance of spirit that dwells within and the other is to go blindly ahead and learn by hard experiences. Well, I don't know about you, but the first one sounds a lot better to me than the second one. Spiritual understanding works in so many ways and I'll tell you this, it doesn't really matter what age you are, your spiritual understanding can tune in and tap in at any age. You have those gifts when you were born, you came in with these 12 powers. And so understanding goes way beyond the facts or knowledge. It's that inner knowing. There's something inside of you that provides that information. You don't exactly know where it comes from when it's a spiritual insight. You don't really know. You don't have to know. But it's information beyond the norm. And it's helping us to move through experiences in our lives in, a, in an easier way more powerful way and I'll, I'll give you a good example of it. In 2004, a little girl, a 10 year old named Tilly and her family were having their vacation at Christmas time in Thailand. And they were out at the beach walking that morning. They were walking on the beach and Tilly noticed that all the waves were coming in. They were all frothy and none of them were going out. Waves just kept coming and coming and coming. And she knew from studies in school that this was a sign of a tsunami. But her family just went, oh, you know, it's okay. Everything's going to be fine, you know. She pitched a fit until she got their attention and got them back to the hotel. Then they told the guard what they thought, the hotel guard that worked there, what was going on. and. He notified all the hotel guests, and they all got to safety. 10,000 people lost their physical lives in that tsunami in 2004. Not one person died in that hotel. The tabloids started to call Tilly the angel of the beach because that 10-year-old girl saved many, many lives that day by pitching a fit out on the beach, listening to her inner voice, listening to what she knew to be the truth. How did she know? Divine understanding, spiritual understanding. She put two and two together from what she learned and what she felt in her vibration. I'm sure she felt the frenetic energy of what was about to happen. We have to grow our powers. We have to grow our sense of spiritual understanding. Sharon Connors says in her book about the 12 powers, it's called Adventures and Resilience. And she says, spiritualized understanding is a precious jewel that taps into the infinite spring-fed well of compassion. It takes us gently beneath the facts of the life facts of life, the circumstances that we're living through, the emotions, the perceptions, 
to a truer seeing through the surface of whatever our eyes can see and our minds can interpret spiritual understanding drops a plumb line to universal truth this dissolves the crusted edges of the facts into the nourishing nectar of acceptance don't you love the way she writes forgiveness humility and compassion our inner vision is infused with that divine perspective through our willingness to see the situation or person differently out of this comes a quintessential understanding of right action right action is like our fifth principle we're moving in to right action when we're paying attention and we're tapped in tuned into spirit we know what is ours to do we don't even have to question it we know what is ours to do so how do we do this well you know prayer is always my first go-to I'm always going to prayer first asking for guidance of spirit and so that's my first go-to so you pray and ask to be able to see it differently see it rightly see it the way it's supposed to be and then you want to call on your power of love to heal the situation because there's nothing that enough love cannot heal no situation at all like I did in my opening story and then you can affirm something like I give thanks that spiritual understanding now dissolves all misunderstandings in me like we did in meditation today I see prayer and this whole piece as the fourth principle God is I am I think I pray I live so we use that prayer step to help us get in tune with our spiritual understanding and to ask for that which we desire because in unity in new thought we pray affirmatively we don't beseech a God out in the sky we pray affirmatively knowing that God is right here right now within us so we pray saying thank you God that I can see this differently that I can claim this in a new way that I can hold that I have a a dear friend that's been uh, up in Chautauqua doing a, a talk this past Sunday and I watched her talk and she did this cute thing she said you know I'm really working with my congregation to get them out of that God in the sky kind of thing and she said so this is what I do I say hello God <laughs> because God is as close as every breath you take there isn't some man sitting on a cloud somewhere with a white beard that's gonna take his magic wand and fix things for you you are a powerful creator and so you can create this life that you so choose by what you think what you feel what you focus on what you pray for and so we pray affirmatively not as God outside of us but God within so we beef up our spiritual practices and then we notice what we're noticing it's one of Tracy's favorites we notice what we're noticing so now today we're in scripture We're in Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. That was always one of my favorites growing up. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Don't you want that peace of God in you? I do. That's one of the things I strive for all the time. Do you know that in the Bible, 
365 times it says, do not be afraid. Well, by my account, that's one per day. <laughs> Every single day. Do not be afraid. The message is there. So this scripture, what follows when the God of peace is with us, we are at peace within and without in our lives. The peace of God which, pers were, which surpasses all human understanding. That's the big difference. In our humanness, we can't possibly know the good that is unfolding for us. It's in our spiritual understanding that we know. So it's surpassing all human understanding. That is within us is nonetheless real and permanent, and it fills our whole being because what happens when we don't have peace. What happens? Nobody likes to be in that place. Because what's happening is when we're in fear and anxiety, we are, it's like stepping on the flow of the water hose. We're stepping on the flow of our good. We're preventing our good to come to us because we're in this place of fear and anxiety. And you can't be open and receptive when you're doing this, right? <sighs> so I don't know about you, but I want all the peace that I can get. It's a number one priority in my life. Charles Fil Fillmore in his book, The Twelve Powers of Man, says, no one ever attains spiritual consciousness without striving for it. I think our job is to cultivate it, to cultivate it. When I first learned about the five principles and the 12 powers, I tested them. I tested them to see if they really worked. I'm not sure what that is, Bob. a wire on my mic. Oh, sorry, everybody. Think I'm good now? I knew it wasn't my jewelry. It's usually my earrings are dangling against the microphone or something. Uh, the more I tested the five principles and the 12 powers, the more simple and wonderful my life got. When I realized that those things were working in and through me and that I had that kind of power to create the life that I wanted, it was like no holes barred. I became like a sponge. Took every single class because I thought, this stuff really works. And it did. When you start applying these teachings in your life, it's just amazing. And once you get to that consciousness, there's no going back. You can't go back to the way you were because you've grown. You've outgrown that angry man in the sky kind of God. You've outgrown that. Your God is more personal, more precious. Dr. Emily Cady says, you may say to yourself over and over again that you are well and wise and happy. On the middle plane, a certain cure is effective. And for a time, you will feel healthy, wise, and happy. But this is a form of self-hypnotism. But until down in the depths of your being, you are consciousness of your oneness with the eternal presence, until you know within yourself that the spring of all wisdom and health and joy is within your own being, ready at any moment to leap forth at the call of your need you will not have spiritual understanding. When you understand how powerful you are, how precious and special, and how gifted you are with all these spiritual gifts, 
She goes on to say that getting to this deeper understanding is necessary for our spiritual growth. It cannot come from an intellectual understanding, but the wisdom of the heart. That's how we know. Spiritual understanding helps us find the miracle and the meaning in the mess. Don't you love that? There have been some miracles and there have been some times we've been really digging for that meaning, trying to figure out what the heck's going on, right? So spiritual understanding helps you see it in a different way. It helps you make informed decisions about our responses to other people in particular and in the circumstances in our lives instead of just reacting. That's our old way of being, you see. Reacting. Now we take it in and we think about it. Eric Butterworth in his book Discover the Power Within You says, man is not in the world to set it right. Man is in the world to see it rightly. And isn't that what we talk about here all the time? That's our principle three. Thoughts held in mind produce after their kind. What you focus on expands. What you think about, you bring about. All of those little catchphrase phrases that we have for thinking differently about what's going on in our lives. When you see it rightly, you help create that reality. You're an incredibly powerful expression of God, if you so choose to use it in that way. Okay, enough preaching. Time for a little joke. Six-year-old Angie and four-year-old Joel are sitting in church together. And Joel is singing, he's talking out loud, he's making all this noise, his sister's getting embarrassed, and she leans over to Joel and she says, Joel, we're in church, you're not supposed to talk in church. And Joel said, yeah, well, who's going to stop me? And she said, you see those two guys at the back of the room? He turns around and he looks and he says, yeah, so what? She said, they're hushers. <laughs> hushers, not ushers, but hushers. Did you get it, Honor? Okay, good. I want to close today with Reverend Chris Chenoweth, one of my favorite guys. He says, the greatest treasure you can ever hope to find is already within you, the treasures of your heart. Your God-given treasure chest contains emotional strength, well-being, boundless energy, and even more of an endless supply of God's bounty. This treasure chest is unlocked spiritually from the inside out. Live your life knowing that you are blessed by God, now and forever. With God's help, you will believe that all things are possible for you and you will be able to move forward to fulfill your hopes and your dreams. God is love. So let us open up this treasure of love that is already prepared for us. And that's the way it really is. Thank you so much. Thank you. And now we get to go to our good and give from that good into this spiritual community. And whether you're giving your tithe today or whether you are watching at another time online and using the PayPal button or the Breeze link, however it comes in, we are extremely grateful for your generosity. So let's say this together. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Thank you, God, that this is so. And so it is, everyone. Namaste.